Hello, welcome to our national weather forecast. For some, it's going to be a very wet and windy Wednesday. We have Met Office yellow warnings in place. Hi, everyone. I'm currently here in Milford Haven Marina, sheltering from the weather. After a fantastic summer, no bad weather of any real significance, the autumn has come with a vengeance. It's been non-stop low pressures barreling into the UK like a conveyor belt of wind and rain and there's no sign of it stopping anytime soon so having been caught in gales three times while I was out sailing um, and after as you'll see shortly a uh, rather hair-raising experience in Holyhead where I came very very close to losing Gigi it could have all been over at that point. Um, extremely grateful to all of the people who came down, put themselves at risk to help me get the boat to safety. That was the most insane experience. But we'll come to that shortly. First of all, I should explain it's been several weeks since the last video and I haven't really gone very far. It's proving really difficult to find weather windows long enough and at the right time to be able to actually sail from place to place given that I've got to sail overnight now pretty much the days are not long enough on their own to get to anywhere meaningful so there isn't a huge amount of sailing in this video unfortunately but the sails that I have done have been some of the hardest that I've faced ever since I started sailing the conditions I've been out in, because I had to, have been atrocious at times. The waves have been huge and the wind has been insane at times. So without further ado, let's get on to what happened in Hollyhead. For most, Tuesday is the brightest, driest, sunniest day of the week. It's going to be a fine one for most places, although we did start off with some fog. Notice lurking down to the southwest, however, there's a lot of cloud. This is a large area of low pressure that will continue to churn away and just edge ever closer over the next couple of days, introducing more and more showers and a stronger wind too. So it's at this point that I'm watching the weather forecast, watching this front approaching sitting in Holyhead Marina, knowing that it's all fine as long as the wind doesn't blow from the northeast. And what I'm seeing is the wind coming from the southeast. I'm thinking worst case scenario it might come from the east. What I didn't expect was that as the front went over, the wind turned to the northeast. Exactly the thing that I didn't need to happen. Within half an hour, the wind increased from the 20-25 knots that was forecast up to 30 knots, 35 knots, 40 knots and within half an hour it looked like this. At this point we were desperately trying to get the lines off the boat uh, so I could take her around to the other side of the pontoon. Couldn't have done it without the help of all the guys that showed up from the yacht club, the harbour and uh, the navy especially. With every wave that came in the boat was getting closer and closer to being smashed on the concrete pontoon. Probably the scariest moment of my life. Problems didn't end there with 40 knots of wind blowing. Uh, despite getting the boat right up against the pontoon on the other side, unfortunately the wind was blowing her off so quickly by the time we got lines on, well, you can see what happened. It took a while to get her alongside and tied up safely. I'd like to offer my sincerest thanks to everyone that helped out, and especially the crew of P292, who were absolute lifesavers on the day. The boat completely undamaged not even a scuff i consider that to be a miracle and the next day all is bliss again 
departed Hollyhead at 2am this morning. It's uh, been blowing 20 knots, gusting 25, it's supposed to be force 2, force 3, according to the forecast. Making good progress, too good. I was expecting to be going a lot slower. Right now, if we continue at this rate, we'll arrive in Fishguard at 1am. Not a problem getting into Fishguard in the dark, it's nice and easy. However, thunderstorms all night, all across Ireland. It made me very glad I didn't continue with the idea of heading across to Ireland today. Decided to head straight for Fishguard um, because the firing range is open for the rest of the week which makes getting in there a little bit harder. I've got to go a lot further south before I can turn to go to Fishguard. So we can go straight across it today. Just made my tack to head towards Fishguard. Didn't quite get it 100% right, but the wind's veering round to the southwest, so hopefully my course will veer along with it. However, I saw these rather ominous looking clouds moving in <laughs> and decided to head away from them. So I tacked a little bit earlier than I probably would have done. There were thunderstorms all over Ireland in the night as I was sailing south, so I was quite glad I didn't go to Ireland in the end. Just as the sun's going down, the wind is gone. We're doing two or three knots now, which means the last 30 miles is going to take around 10 hours. Maybe more. And then we'll be worrying about getting in going at night instead of in daylight. I think there's a good chance I might actually be in daylight now. Just about to enjoy the sunset, but I decided it wasn't enough wind to go forwards, so we should go backwards the way we came. So, yes, I'm now motoring, I'm motor sailing to be precise. We've still got uh, near enough 30 miles to go. It'll be dark soon. So, I anticipate I'll be arriving in the early hours of the morning at some point. Anyway. Is uh, rolling Atlantic waves are rather spectacular.
fish yard is uh, behind us. I've been sat there on anchor waiting for a weather window to get south to Milford Haven. Get myself tucked up in the marina there. Um, but the window's not going to come and the weather looks like it's only going to get worse. So we're uh, making a run for it today. Forecast is for six or seven, possibly gale force eight later. And sea conditions are moderate and rough in the west. We, uh, we're not going to go through Ramsey Sound or anything ridiculous like that. We're going to go outside of all the islands. Uh, it's going to be big waves in the Irish Sea, but currently motor sailing. Got uh, a bit of head sail out. It's gusting up to 30, 32 at the moment, but we're in the lee of the land still. Um, so, sea conditions and wind not as bad as they're going to get. Once I go out into the Irish Sea, it's going to get a lot worse. Unfortunately, it wasn't left with any choice. If I'd left it any longer, I would have been sitting on anchor through a westerly gale force 8, 9, possibly 10 in a few days' time. Making a run for it, basically. Uh, should be in Milford Haven around 4pm, possibly 5 or 6 but it's intending to motor sail the whole way just to keep the speed up for the current against us at the moment. That switches round so it'll be with us about noon. What fun! Not looking forward to getting out into the Irish Sea. It's going to be a, a challenge, I just know it. Not sure how much filming I'm going to do. I'm going to say I'm a touch nervous. I don't, uh, I don't mind running on the wind when it's strong and the waves are big, but this is not going to be a run. I'm going to be smashing into it once we're out in the Irish Sea.
that's the point where the camera had to go away. The waves were um, coming over the boat uh, a bit too often and things were getting a little bit wet. So um, from that point onwards, I made my way out into deep water, into the Irish Sea. And um, in all honesty, it was a bit better out there. The waves weren't breaking quite as often. So um, it was reasonably pleasant if that's the right word, sailing across the Irish Sea. Just as I was coming to Skoma with a plan to hug the bishops and stay out of the overfalls, uh, unfortunately I had an oil tanker steaming towards me who uh, wanted to go port to port, which would have been fine. I could have um, stayed out to the west, away from Skoma Island, uh, but at the same time, I had a tanker coming from behind who wanted to pass my starboard side, which meant I was going to have to go right down the middle between Skoma and the bishops and straight through the overfalls. So it got a bit rough, would be putting it mildly. The waves that you saw in the video there were tiny in comparison to off Skoma. I couldn't record it. Uh, it was all a little bit intense with shipping passing less than half a mile away on either side of me. The uh, the screwy part of it is the ship that was coming from behind suddenly decided to veer off and go around the outside of the bishops. So I could have actually stayed out of the overfalls after all, but I was stuck there. There was one learning that I got from crossing the Irish Sea is um, it's far better to stay way further away from land, um, out in deep water where the waves aren't quite as violent. Um, so that's that's something I will take away the next time I have to do something like that. I will stay far, far further out. There was one other incident after I got past Skoma, heading into the Bristol Channel. I went down to do a log entry and just as I was sitting down at the chart table a wave rocked the boat and my shoulder went into the switch panel and of course the one switch that my shoulder would go and hit would be the instruments. So everything went off. The auto helm uh, was immediately up gone and the boat went side on to the breaking waves and rolled rather horribly rather horribly fortunately i had a tiny scrap of the genoa out just a little handkerchief and that pushed the bow round straight away so that the stern was into the waves and I could get up and get things under control again. That pretty much saved the day without realizing that that would happen, of course. So I made my way into Dale Bay and picked up a mooring for the night. Uh, the tide wasn't right to go into the marina here. It's uh, very shallow coming in and um, although I could have come in I didn't want to take the chance it would have been going dark by the time I got here so after spending the night in Del Bay through some fairly strong winds I set off early in the morning to get through the lock while it was in free flow and into the marina very glad I did because the wind was insane that evening absolutely insane um, well have a look for yourself
I'd like to say that was a one-off, but we've had weather like that almost every other night for the last couple of weeks. I've been stuck here, unable to find a window to get further south, and what that has meant is that, rather excitingly, I've got Starlink on its way. So I'm very much looking forward to that arriving and being able to work and access the internet and do conference calls from anywhere without the problems of 4G connectivity, which would be a huge difference. So there we are. I'll leave you now with the fireworks display. Enjoy. <laughs> 